So good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> uh, today's agenda, we have a reminder that the call for participations for the uh, Global Forum close out on the 13th. So get your yayas out and submit proposals for the, the, uh, the Global Forum. It should be good. Um, we can do a, uh, a quick recap of the um, Amsterdam Hackfest and just a reminder for registration for the October 3rd and 4th Hackfest in Montreal that's uh, going to be following the uh, members, member summit uh, also in Montreal. Um, the timing and process, okay. I, I didn't catch the vote part. All right, I have to look at that. Um, so then we have quarterly updates from Quilt and Caliper. Is that correct, Todd? Did we get those? Just checking if uh, Caliper came in overnight. One second. Yeah, no, no Caliper yet, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, but we do have Quilt. We do have the PS uh, WG. And is Adrian or somebody on? For, yeah, uh, uh, but, uh, yeah. Okay. Great. And then we will. Uh, oh, is Mark on for performance and scale? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Awesome. He's on. Right. Cool. Um, so, um, any other items for the agenda? If not, I think we can uh, dive into the. Amsterdam uh, Hackfest recap. So um, I thought uh, it was uh, it was good. I think um, you know we still <laughs> I think we still need to work a little bit on you know what the right sort of format is for um, day zero, how to get people involved and up and running. Um, I think you know this in the past we had set it up so that we had you know. Um, uh, pitches that gave an overview and then we set aside, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours or something like that after lunch. And then we had breakouts. And so if you wanted to do sawtooth, you could do sawtooth. If you wanted to do fabric, if you wanted to do indie, whatever, you could go into the various breakouts. And the problem there was that some people wanted to do more than one, but they had to choose. Um, so this time, <laughs> Um, I think it ended up being that everybody had more to present than they had time to get people up and running. And uh, we didn't do the thing that I had suggested a few weeks back. And that's a bad on me as well, because I didn't do it. Uh, and I was the one that suggested it was uh, getting people sort of pre bootstrapped um, uh, before the Hackfest itself. So I don't know, you know, when we think about doing Montreal, Todd and Brian, if you're on, I think we need to. Um, uh, I think we need to work on on how we how we play that. Um, anyway, so I, I thought I thought it was generally good. I thought the 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 first day was absolutely jam packed. We had staying room in the back only, um, and uh, I think uh, each of the. Uh, presentations was well received and uh, people got a lot of a lot out of it um i don't know what others think but that was that was my impression of day zero and then i think day two and and three uh, i was in the main tent for most of the time um or day one and day two as the case may be uh but i thought that there was a lot of really good uh, discussion cross project discussions and um, and a lot of those happened outside of the, the sort of the formal hall meetings, I think. But uh, that was that was my impression. So I don't know if others that were present want to weigh in. Yeah, I was not Alish from Ceramid, so I was not there on the first day, so I cannot comment. But the second and the third day were really great. Mm -hmm. uh, going forward, what I think we can do is to improve is maybe have an agenda up front, uh, especially for the people that are visiting from the, from the bigger companies, because usually they need approvals and they need to show what the agenda is, what they will be listening to, to their bosses to, to get approvals. So that might help us get uh, even more people 
for that part. And I agree, some people uh, actually did complain that they want to listen to several sessions at the same time. So maybe if we can arrange recordings, it would be great. Uh, I, I'm not sure if that's possible, but for the future, mm -hmm. so that we could, people can review the sessions that they could not attend. But just for participants, probably, or I don't know. Uh, Alex, that's a that's that's a good idea. I don't again. I don't know the practicality of it, but uh, yeah, I think. Um, uh, but th now the 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 um, uh, the agenda is published now. Again, some of it is locked down. You know, closer to the event itself. But we certainly had the event agenda for day zero uh, more than a month in advance. It was uh, finalized. Um, and there was most of the sessions where um, people, people um, had been posting. So, um, you know, it, I mean, it's an unconference. And so as a result, um, it's not like a formal conference where we have, you know, call for papers and that kind of thing. So, I don't know. Um, I, didn't, I didn't think there was a lack of attendance. I, I mean, it was... No, no, no. I'm, I, right? no so, I'm not saying that. So sessions were well, well uh, visited, but but still, maybe some people, uh, maybe there could be more people. I, I I'm not sure, but yeah, yeah. Todd, do you know uh, what the attendance figures were, or anybody for that matter? Yeah, on on the uh, the day zero, we had about 135, which was the most we've seen ever, and then for the formal. Uh, Hackfest, the days one and two. Uh, I think the first day we had around 120, 125, and then the second day around 110, 115. Uh, so really phenomenal numbers for that, the most we've seen in the past two and a half years. Yeah, that's great that the numbers held out through the three days. And there was actually quite a bit going on in Amsterdam. <laughs> uh, there was uh, a blockchain yeah. expo conference that was nearby, and then there was a Rethink Trust downtown by Central Station. Everybody, and, um, everybody was commuting. It was funny. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, you, you know, you walk around the city and say, What are you doing here? Oh, no, I mean, another conference. What? Yeah. <laughs> so it was really funny. It's a small place, right? So in the yeah. center. Yeah. We'll have to do planning better, though, because there was no food on Friday. Not, not by the Hackfest itself, but in town. <laughs> What a town. <laughs> yeah, what was that? What's that all about? No food Fridays. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anybody else? Uh, Jonathan, um, anybody else who's on who is present? Yeah, so I, was, I was in and out because I was going to these like three events, right? So, and we, we were, some of us, like, like Chris, right, we were invited to, to speak at, you know, at Within Trust. And no, it was good. It just, it's interesting to see that I think. My feedback is mostly that people begin to realize that they need more enterprises stuff. And many people are coming to us to see, but how are you doing this? Or even when they're trying to do some new stuff with tokens, they're still trying to see what, what has been out there. Yeah. And I think we still have, uh, I don't know if it's still, I think that we, we have a good reputation in terms of the kind of, the, the number of people, like high, highly academic, research organizations and institutions like Intel, IBM Research, et cetera, et cetera, that are highly involved with Hyperledger. So I feel that people do look up to us in, in many ways. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what the solution, how to be in like six places in one go and when stuff is overlapping. <laughs> yeah. But no, no, I, I, think, I think we're doing good on like, we did attract people. What, what was, uh, it's not a criticism, it's actually like good feedback. Is the people that came to Hyperledger knew exactly what they're coming for. You know, when we were, but when I went to Rethink Trust, or when I went to other conference, even when I'm a speaker, I'm not always sure what kind of audience I have. Mm. I, I didn't know, are they more technical, are they investors? It was actually, at least we were very coherent. And I think, we're, I actually think that we do, good, do a very good job there because we, people know what they're coming for and we can provide the goods that they're expecting. So, yeah. yeah, so that, that's what I wanted to do. So others, so Hart, uh, so Nathan. This, this is Nathan. 
Um, yeah. The Indie Project was able to get a lot of hacking done this Hackfest, which is really nice. We had a few groups that came with, with plans on what it is they were going to build. Um, and uh, we were able to get through quite a bit of design and um, coordination work that uh, is a lot faster to do in person when we have the right people present. And uh, I would echo, also echo kind of some of the same sentiments that Chris said about the day zero. It seemed like there was a lot more presenting um, and not a lot of getting things set up. I know we, we'd set up kind of a special Hackfest page with all the prerequisite steps to, to get going on Indie. And as we watched everyone kind of go through the fabric and sawtooth demos, we noticed a lot of people were just kind of you know, sitting and listening as opposed to kind of following along and working on things. So we kind of reshuffled our presentation to do a little bit more talking um, because we thought that that kind of fit the audience and had how the audience was responding to the presenters a little bit better. Um, but something we could do to make that, that day a little bit more interactive uh, and get people um, running more things on their, on their own machines, I think would be really helpful. So, you know, I'm not exactly sure what the right mechanism for that is. Some of the, I asked some of the, the folks who were in the indie sessions later on where we did some more hands-on work, kind of what their thoughts were. And, um, in some ways, they almost uh, they said things like maybe we should split out into into more than one group and uh, um, some of the things that we'd actually tried at some hackfest previously. So I'm not sure exactly where that leaves us, other than um, you know I'm going to try to do do more to make it an interactive session where we actually get someone started working with some code um, it, it, when we try it again, and we'll yeah. see we'll see how that goes. Um, and I think if all of us who are doing project presentations do that same thing, we might be able to shift the culture of that day zero perhaps just a little bit um, away from listening to a presentation and to, you know, what's broken on my setup? Can you help me? Yeah. Um, having plans up front as to who was working on what things before the Hackfest started in terms of getting people to, to seed the agenda with the topics they were interested in was helpful. Um, and I, though that also created the problem that was mentioned before where there was a lot of overlap and conflict between, you know, people wanted to be in two or three different places at once. I know I didn't get a chance to go to a, a dozen things that I would have really liked to participate in and learn more about because I had already planned on running things to help people um, get the hacking done that they wanted to get done. So I think we'll always see some of that tension going forward and, uh, I think that's a high quality problem and I'm not disappointed or upset by that. Hart? Yeah, can you guys hear me? I can yeah. now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yes. I'm sorry, I've had some microphone issues. Yeah, I wanted to agree with Nathan. Um, I think that I was walking around the room and not a lot of people were actually you know, setting up the demo you know, during kind of all three demos. And I think maybe if we broke it out into smaller groups where people could get kind of more individualized attention, then uh, that might improve things. And also if we just kind of peeled off the people that had sort of no interest in, uh, in building anything or working on anything as well. There are definitely some people that, uh, you know, that come to these things and, you know, they have no intention of setting up like a dev environment to build or something uh, and if we gave them kind of like a business application focused track uh, that might be helpful because it would give them what they wanted it would allow us to concentrate our development attention on the people that actually wanted to build stuff mm. good feedback all right i think that i don't see anybody else who was there. So I guess that <clears throat> that should cover, unless uh, Brian, do you want to no, add anything I, or? No, nothing to add. Okay. All right. Um, all right, then um, I guess we can move on. So again, just a reminder, the uh, October 3rd and 4th Montreal Hack Fest registration link is up in the agenda. Um, somebody want to post it in the TSC? room, then uh, people can sign up if you haven't already done that. <clears throat> okay, next item, Todd. Yep, let me just uh, drop the link into the chat. 
uh, I'll drop this into rocket chat. Uh, so annual TSC election uh, coming up in the August timeframe. So really just two things for the TSC to review. Uh, TSC just per the charter needs to review the election process um, each year. Um, so the first half of this is really straightforward. It's just the timeline uh, and the process we use. So um, this is consistent across all the LF projects and what we've done on Hyperledger and the various committees here, but effectively uh, one week nomination phase, one week voting phase, then we'll get results announced for that uh, on August 23rd, and then we'll kick off the chair nomination and election process. So this is the exact same time frame, exact same process we've used for the last two years uh, for TSC and TSC chair. Uh, it's worked uh, really well for that. Um, and then the second decision that needs to get made um, is in the past two TSC elections, uh, the way the charter states it is that the contributors and maintainers on the Hyperledger projects are eligible to run in the election. So we basically pull the data from GitHub, Garrett, whatnot, for the last 12 months. Uh, what we've added in addition uh, to that is that the work group chairs were allowed to provide lists of people they believe were contributing to those work groups. So do we continue to do that this year? Uh, and if so, now that we have a wider group of, of work groups, um, what are the parameters around that? So I think the first one around the timeline is straightforward, and then the second one is relatively straightforward, but want the feedback and guidance from the TSC. So I will pause there for any questions. Um, and so maybe breaking into two pieces, in terms of the timeline and process, are there any objections or concerns with that? Uh, I'll be on you? vacation. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> this is going to be awkward. I can probably, I mean, I'm going to be in the Canadian Rockies. I, I, I will have internet, I guess, when I'm in a hotel. Um, and as long as I can vote on my phone, I should be okay. I wasn't planning on bringing a laptop. Yeah, I don't know if we've had issues, particularly for those in, in Europe that tend to be gone in August with, with that election timing, but maybe we can get some yeah. over the next week. And if there's a significant obstacle there, I don't mind pushing it into September. Um, but if, if it's not really a significant obstacle, it's fine with me. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I'm, I mean, it was just a, I was like, oh crap, I'm not here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so we can we can have folks review that uh, once the minutes go out and see if there's any major concerns on timeline. Mm -hmm. And then on the second part, just around the addition of work groups uh, this year, just seeking some guidance from the TSC on how we go. So, do we, um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, how do, where do, where do the new labs fit? Are there, are there any up and going? And, and do those, what do those people have if they're not in the project or a working group? That's a good question, Mark. Um, I mean, technically, they're not incubated projects or active projects, but um, contribution to those does sort of amount to contributions in terms of growing the community and so forth. It's a, it's a good question. I don't know, what, I, what do others think? Uh, yeah, I'd be in favor of including everyone from that. Anybody want to make a, a motion? I would motion that we include those folks in the in the process. Second. Dan seconds. Second. Yeah. All right. Um, anyone opposed? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, do we have a quorum? <laughs> so we do Sorry, have a quorum. We have we have okay, nine, good. nine folks. I think so. Okay. Is this around everything or is this just for inclusive? I think this is just a, a general statement. Do we add the Hyperledger Labs repos to the list for contributors? Okay, so I don't think we need to formally vote. Maybe we just come to consensus. Well, I just, just to, you know, sort of yep. 
get everybody because we're we're expanding the the scope of who who counts. So all uh, anyone opposed to adding the Hyperledger Labs repos to the to the list of repos that are considered for finding contributors and maintainers. I uh, hear no opposed. Okay, so it's unanimous. <clears throat> And uh, and then I guess just um, uh, since we are at quorum, then um, I, and again this this part is this, I, I thought we had agreed that we would always add the work group um, criteria, um, but um, we can we could take a quick vote on that too. So anybody, so, so let's get a, a motion in a second on adding the work group contributors as last year. And so just to be clear, this would include, so all the work groups under the TSC. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I move that we uh, include all of the work group contributors. Um, one one thing on that? that is that the definition of who they contributor to a working group is not um, very firm. Uh, um, these are open mailing lists that anyone can join. Um, the uh, definition of who's a uh, uh, work group lead is more firm. Uh, I, uh, and uh, one thing we, we've done before, I'm, I'm sorry, I was distracted, I'm not sure it was mentioned, but is how the work groups uh, put together a list of people who they feel have made a material that's, contribution. Right, that's the process. Yeah, okay. And so I just dropped the verbiage we use. Effectively, the work group chair nominates, and then there's a, a dispute resolution process if someone feels like they contributed and they were not yep. noted by the work group chair. Okay, great. So somebody want a second mix? Motion. Can we accept Mick from that list, though? Yeah, okay. Mick. Be nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, I, 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 I second labs, that. Anyways. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. Anyone opposed that. to using the same process as last year to select, uh, to include the work group chairs and from each chair a list of the individuals that have contributed meaningfully? Any opposed? If not, then motion carries and we'll follow the same process as last year. Okay, so and those then two additions then, Todd, the- Great, we'll do have it. Tracy just, include the, the uh, Hyperledger Labs repos. We'll do it. And, and then for the timing, we're gonna punt until next week to lock that down or are folks- ready? No, I, I, I just, it was just an observation I was making that I was gonna have, I mean, it's just me. I don't know if others are out, I'm sure, but- uh, Okay. We did it in August last year, so it shouldn't be too hard. All right. Are there any objections from the TSC folks on this call to that time time frame? Uh, only if I get to go with Chris on vacation, because it sounds like <laughs> it's <that's> awesome. <laughs> All right. So, sounds good. So we'll move forward with that timeline, adding the labs repos and the work group verbiage as of uh, similar to last year. So thank you. Okay. Cool. Hi, uh, this is George. I have a quick question related to working groups. Uh, Go ahead, George. What, uh, what is the, the procedure uh, and is there a, a charter template uh, to, uh, to submit and, and uh, launch a new working group? I, a couple of months ago, I think six months ago, I tried it and there was no templates for the charters. Has that been formalized? I, I, I made a proposal for uh, artificial intelligence blockchain integration. Uh, I'd like to give that another go. It didn't go through the last time. Uh, I don't think I got any uh, notice uh, for that. Who should I contact and what's the process? Um, so the work group charter proposal template is in the wiki. And I'm gonna paste that in the TSC chat right now. And um, so the process is basically to complete the uh, the template and and um, 
and submit it to the the TSC for discussion. Uh, and and, and George, for... one of the things that we can do is help you with uh, creating one of those. Um, because we are starting to work on a couple of additional like industry working groups um, and uh, recruiting people for the proposal uh, will help help it get passed, right? So uh, we, I mean, we meaning the Linux Foundation staff. So feel free to contact me or Marta or David or any 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 one of us that you know or, or don't even know yet. We're friendly people, reach out to us, yeah. we'll help. Okay, yeah, I've got a, a charter uh, already put together. And uh, so I'd, I'd like to submit it. Uh, and once I submit it, it gets reviewed. And then should I come to the next TSC uh, meeting and uh, raise my hand and say, has that, are, are there any questions? Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, I, I mean, I think so that, so the, the, we probably should document the process, but the process would basically, yeah, you fill out the template you should get, you know, others to sort of co-sponsor it with you so that we get a sense of who's interested in participating. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, send it to the PSC mailing list and and then Todd will add it to the agenda. And he usually reaches out. I'm sure he actually always reaches out and, and uh, lets people know if they're on the agenda. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. So who's up? We got uh, Quilt. Going once, going twice. You are counting TSC sessions that we waited for an update? Uh, this would be three. Yeah. Adrian did reach out to me um, uh, last week and apologized. He had a call that ran over and he thought he could join late to give it, uh, to give his update. So, um, well, if he, come, if he joins, then, sorry, Dan, go ahead. I, I thought somebody had said at the beginning that, that he was on. I'm, I, I thought so too. And that's why I'm holding on to hopefully somebody's just having trouble coming off mute. Yeah, it's too bad if he's not on because he's gone to the trouble of actually filling out the... Right. <clears throat> that's... Uh, yeah, last week we ended the call after 10 minutes, I think, and he joined it at the bottom of the hour and nobody was there. Okay. Um, so we'll hold that and if he joins, then we'll, we'll have that. Uh, and then, uh, is Victor or anybody on for Caliper and we, we've not received an update from them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mark. Yeah. I wonder if somebody ping him on chat. I'm not, I wonder if there's some sort of communication problem with Caliper that, um, you know, maybe they don't participate here because of the time zone. Um, can't imagine they're not. Well, Victor has been on a number of times, yeah. so I don't know. And and Bauha, I think I saw on, right? So, uh, sorry, Bauha, sorry. do you know if? Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Yeah. So sorry, this is Haojun from Clipper team. Yeah, and, that's it. And <laughs> also, we have a new new team member named Kelly. She is also from the Clipper team. And she will be the representative of Huawei for this project. Mm -hmm. So I think she will introduce the new progress of this project to you. So, Caroline, can you begin your introduction? Okay. Uh, can uh, Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, can I share my uh, screen, or I just uh, talk about it? Todd, you want to? There you go. Uh, uh, first, uh, uh, we have to do something about uh, the, uh, the features. So we have updated the support of Fabric to version 1.1. And we also optimized the support for the tools. And uh, we uh, then we ended the uh, support for Iroha and 
Uh, except, except these efforts, we also have the extend uh, a test case named the small bank, and we also optimize the documentation. Uh, about uh, the uh, community. Are you sharing a screen? Because we, I, I don't see anything. Okay, sorry. Can you see my screen? No, I'm I cannot. Not seeing anything. Maybe you just want to show the report, then you can ask Todd for help. So I, I, I don't think we've received the writ, written report yet, unfortunately. Can you see my... Oh, can that's you see it. Oh. oh, I see it's okay. a presentation. Okay, so we need to put yeah. it into the wiki. So uh, can you see, see it now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. I just said uh, our our do, our efforts about to uh, improve the features. Uh, we did the, uh, the support of Fabric Two version one point one, and uh, we also optimized the support for the tools and uh, added support for Eroha and the Composer. We also um, added a uh, uh, a new test case a small. We also optimize the documentation. Uh, about uh, the community building, we, as you see, now we have 110 stars, 63 forks, and 10 contributors from Huawei, IBM, Intel, and uh, Budapest University. Uh, except the users from Com Composer and Euroha, we also have add new users from Persistent Systems and the Trust Trusted Blockchain Alliance. Persistent System is a company in India, and the Trusted Blockchain Alliance is led by History of Industry and the Information Technology of the Chinese government. Now, they, now uh, Trusted Blockchain Alliance is using Calipar as part of uh, the certific uh, certification tool. Uh, according to the, uh, uh, these users, uh, we have the plan. Uh, the next plan is uh, include, uh, we, we will go, uh, go on working with White Block to add a network emulator. And uh, uh, as we know, persistent system has uh, do some um, optimization in client. So we, we will uh, upstream their uh, features into the caliper. And uh, then we will uh, work with trusted bench to add more pressure test simulator, more use cases. Trust bench, uh, trusted bench is a project which is led by uh, the blockchain alliance. Uh, so that's our work. That's all. Oh, okay. Do you have any questions? Um, actually, I've got a question. Hi, that's Nikolai from Saramitsu. We've been using your tool for performance and load measurements and um, I want to know if you've got some plans for CI support so that we can use your tool as the part of our continuous integration pipeline so that we can check every change in the code base if it uh, improves or worsens the performance of our um, of our Eroha here. Do you have any plans for that in the future? Uh, okay. I mean, maybe you've got some plans for CI integration, maybe Jenkins, maybe some other tools. Uh, if not, we can talk about this maybe in Huawei Calipers chat just as a uh, feature request. Uh, we, we, we don't have this uh, plan yet, but I think that's a good point and we can discuss it offline if you want to help us to uh, build the CI. Okay, great.
Are there any issues that you'd like to bring to the TSC's attention? Uh, not yet. Right. <clears throat> so I think, you know, in, in sort of along the lines of Dan's question, are you comfortable with the um, sort of the, the, the um, pace and the, the, if you will, the arc of, of growing a, a development community around Caliper? Um, I mean, I, I think, I think you know, it's, it's, it's good to see the, the, the sort of the collaborative effort that is going on, but um, you know, oftentimes we look for, um, uh, for even more. Um, but just curious. Uh, I think in the uh, past uh, like three months, our main focus is on the development part, and uh, and uh, I think after that, in the future, we we would like to do more uh, do more communication with the, with the community to improve our influence. Uh, uh, for example, maybe we can show a demo on some uh, hackfest or, or something like that to to appear more contribute to appear more contributions to uh, to participate participate in this project. Okay. Just out of curiosity, how many? So I you know I, I think we have support as was noted for Sawtooth Fabric and Aroha. How many people are actually? I'm just curious from the TSC perspective and anyone else that's on. Are people using Caliper? I know I have. Um, I had a little trouble getting 1.2 working because it wasn't really ready yet, and so I had to do some hacking on my own. But um, just curious if others are are using it. As for Hyperledger Iroha, that's our pipeline of uh, release to support. Um, I mean, to integrate uh, an upcoming release in Caliper so that if you want to run a measurement against our new release, um, Caliper is ready. So, yeah, we think that's a great tool, but we still need to negotiate more with performance uh, working group so that mm -hmm. we can, um, you know, come to a conclusion of what is the notion of a committed transaction and things like that. I, I think we have uh, some work in that direction. I, I mean, we need to have more work in that direction. Okay. I think that's fair. Any other questions for Caroline or Haojin? Are there any um, language restrictions up front? I think there's... Um, I'm remembering right, most of the tools in, in JavaScript, there's, um, there's a requirement then to be building transactions with JavaScript or if they can just always work out calls to things in other languages that would be used as clients. Yeah, now the old, old framework is uh, implemented uh, through JavaScript. And we also uh, get some advice from other people that they may want to some uh, want to support for other language like Java or, or Go or other language. Uh, we are considering it. Do you foresee any performance limitations in the tool itself uh, using JavaScript? In the, the the no 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 I don't think there there are any any restriction of JavaScript. From my point of view, the performance of the uh, plan set is uh, good enough. And if 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 any people have any uh, uh, have any performance consideration about the plan set, about Caliper itself, we can talk about it. Okay. Thank you. Any others? Okay. If not, then uh, next up is Mark. Uh, 
thank you. Thank you. Sure, and uh, hey, Agent, we'll be sorry. happy to work with you guys on the definition. Just sorry, one just one last reminder then for the the Caleb team, if you wouldn't mind just copying your report into the template on the on the wiki, that'll make it consistent with the rest of the um, project and working group updates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will probably do it later. Thank you. Sorry, Mark, go ahead. Sure. And Todd, um, can you share my presentation? Well, my page there. Um, and at this point, you know, Dan and I will sort of tag team here. And uh, anyone else from the PSWG wants to hop in, feel free. So overall, you know, we've continued to push forward with the metrics document. Um, I think Chris, you were on a call or two. Um, I've missed a bunch due to some health issues, but I have six weeks off now to uh, dig into everything and help get this wrapped up. Um, and a lot of the problem is just, you know, what is a, you know, when is a transaction uh, finalized? You know, and if you think of all the different implementations that are out there, trying to come up with something that covers most of the cases is uh, a bit challenging, but I think we're making good progress on that. Um, eight to 10, eight to 12 regular participants on the calls and Todd, I'll get you a list of those. Um, spread across the globe, many companies, uh, three or four academias. So it, uh, really good technical discussions. Um, and we probably go too deep lately. But uh, I think we're, you know, reaching outside the hyperledger community. We have some people from the uh, Royal Bank of Scotland. Hopefully, I got that right. I know there's two banks up there, in similar name, that have joined um, as well. So we get a good diversity of people and um, many different viewpoints on on the same thing. So that actually, you know, makes it take longer, but helps make it more accurate. I think. At this point, I think we need to start wrapping up the document um, and possibly bring things up a level on the technical detail. But I think in the last couple of weeks, we've been making good progress on that. Um, <clears throat> Dan, you wanna add yeah, anything? I think, um, as far as diversity, I think one of the most important diversity metrics we have for for that working group is making sure that we've got representation from the different architectural styles and I think we have had good representation from uh, fabric sawtooth and uh, even corda which not a uh, hyperledger project but still uh, viewpoints that we wanted to comprehend in the document so I think that's good um, I think we got relatively good geographic diversity at least from the the northern hemisphere um, I'm sure there's a lot of work going on in, in the southern hemisphere that would be nice to, to capture and then other sorts of demographics are to infer from the phone call but uh, mostly a, a male population so um, we do want to have uh, good knowledge of all the, the work that's going on in all the viewpoints uh, and everybody is uh, welcome in those meetings uh, and then the the last thing on my mind then is is what uh, Mark was getting into about we're it feels like we're tailing off towards a conclusion on on some of these points and it might not be uh, ever a hundred percent because there are so many kind of conflicting requirements uh, if if you wanted to get down to a single definition but I, I feel like we have all these viewpoints comprehended in some way so hopefully we'll have this coming to a conclusion soon. So then uh, my question for maybe some of the other working groups that have produced a document is what does that flow look like? Uh, I know that we've worked with tech writers uh, facilitated by the Linux Foundation uh, to, to help clean up a document before it's published. And then uh, also what we want to do with change control uh, as we start heading into that last stage. I don't know if uh, Hart or um, someone else who's uh, been or somebody who's, who's gotten 
documents all the way through Rom maybe if he's on uh, what the what that actual process looks like it's uh, time consuming uh, and uh, we will give you the whole story next week at the white paper uh, hopefully conclusion um, but uh, are you working with a technical writer no not yet Okay, so for at least for us, what I think the um, the general solution tends to be for both the uh, white paper, white paper, and the architecture white papers, is we get the text into some kind of shape that we're happy with the content, even if we're not completely happy with the presentation, uh, and then we get the help of a professional, and uh, they help us make it more readable and look nice. Thanks. Yeah. So we probably have, uh, I don't know, uh, hopefully not more than two to four. I'm oh, sorry. Was I talking over? No, not at all. Okay. We got a little feedback on my mic, but anyway, um, uh, after that point, we'd want, want the, the tech writer involved or, or maybe even sooner than that. So, um, from a process perspective at the Linux foundation, I'm not sure uh, who we work through there. Brian or Todd, I don't know if you've got immediate feedback there for us. Sorry, I was on mute. <clears throat> I'd imagine that'd be Tracy or Ron. Dan, um, I'll connect up with you offline and can help you out. Thank you. Uh, and then one thing that I, I inadvertently skipped over there, uh, especially since we have Caliper contributors on right now, I, I think that there may have been some obstacles for uh, your continued participation in those working group calls. Uh, not sure if that's a, a time zone challenge or, or if there's other things, but I think we're, uh, we're all interested to make sure that uh, you're well integrated into that working group. So feel free to let us know if there's something that will help accommodate that participation better. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Great. So I, I would encourage, uh, you know, as we're trying to wrap up, I think, you know, Chris hopped in a couple of weeks ago and added some useful comments to the document. Um, and I would encourage anyone on the call, the link is in our report, um, to at least spend, you know, five, ten minutes going through the document and uh, leaving feedback. Though I, I would like to say that I think something that slowed our progress over the last six months was uh, inconsistent participation. So if somebody comes in who hasn't been involved for months and wants to sort of relitigate some definition that's there, then that usually consumes a couple meetings. So we end up going backwards. Uh, so we, we do want more participation, uh, but uh, try to make sure that, that you've got uh, something significant if, if you are going to ask that we uh, take a step back. Yeah. Hey, Dan, this is Brian. Sorry, I was away for a bit. Um, one of the things I might suggest is using the mailing list a bit more for, I know, I know there's great use of the wiki to, to evolve the, uh, uh, the definitions and such, but um, one of the challenges in, in kind of phone calls like this is, you know, unless we have Todd Benzies taking notes, Dina graphically, <laughs> as he does, um, uh, it can be a challenge to remember what was, what was decided upon and, and the rationale behind it, right? Um, so, so if more of the conversations happen over email, that might also help address the uh, accessibility and time zone uh, challenges as well. Uh, not to say phone calls shouldn't happen, just uh, if more of the activity can move, that would be great. That might be helpful. Yeah, thanks for that feedback. One of the things that we do do is we we do change control on a Google Doc, and we tend not to merge changes the meeting that they occur in, so that they stay up at least a week for people to to see the change, and then uh, we tend to merge it in the following week, or in some cases a couple months afterwards, if it seems uh, you know particularly contentious or something like that. Okay. So the, for, for upcoming, um, I was going to submit 
a talk to the global hack fest in switzerland um on the work we've done does do people feel that would be a talk that would be good for people or i mean is that the kind of thing you're looking for that yeah i certainly think i mean this is one of those areas that does you know has you know broader um interest i think than just us chickens at hyperledger because we're really talking about performance and scale measurement of blockchain generally and i think that is all right cool any other questions let me yeah let me double down on that it'd be great to see i mean it might be provocative but extending a handout to you know corda or quorum or uh some of the other organizations and saying, hey, this might be of interest or value to you. And having support for those in Caliper might also be interesting too. Okay, yeah. Quorum actually got spun off, right? That's the rumor. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good rumor. All right, and the other, the other side note is I, like I mentioned, I'm, uh, have had limited time to work on this uh, on my full-time day job, but I am on short-term disability for six weeks, so I have time to work on it now. So, awesome. With, with you know, hope you have a speedy recovery. Well, I don't want it to be too speedy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping to go hiking in, in the Canadian Rockies. Or not. Oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make a party out of it. <laughs> Um, it's, uh, uh, this is Ram. Um, just a quick comment. I'm, I'm doubly muted earlier, uh, so couldn't get my comment in uh, earlier. Just uh, um, uh, on getting the document published, uh, have you reached a point where the all the technical content is more or less complete? Uh, so if you can contact uh, uh, Greg, uh, he's been kind of very helpful to kind of uh, go from the engineering technical version of the document to something that uh, can be consumed more broadly. Greg Wallace. That's correct. Great, thank you. Uh, so, uh, have have we reached a point where you, you, you know, from a technology point of view, this is pretty much done, and it's kind of. Complete? I think it's got uh, probably ninety percent of the content, and that content's probably ninety percent accurate. And uh, so, I think we can we can close up the last ten percent of content. Hopefully, in the next. Uh, I don't know, two to four weeks, like I was saying, and uh, I don't know that we'll, I don't want to strive for 100% accuracy if uh, fault. Uh, I think, yeah, yeah. so we've typically started uh, when we were 85, 90% to get the dialogue going with uh, with the writer. So I think that's, that's a great time to transition over. And perhaps we can have a, invite you guys to come to one of our work group session to kind of go over that just to see if there's any overlap and uh, coordination between the groups. You know, if, if yeah, that yeah, thank you. would help. Well, I was also thinking, so I think, you know, this is one of those key things, not that the others, white paper and architecture and so forth are not also key, but um, this is also potentially an area <laughs> where there's, um, uh, I understand the backsliding comment, Dan, but um, uh, when people talk about performance and scale, uh, people get persnickety for a variety of reasons um, because things can get biased in the wrong direction and so forth. So I think it might actually be worthwhile just sort of doing a, a group group in the TSC itself of what we have in the document. <clears throat> um, I could also encourage everybody to join the performance and scale working group call, but um, and maybe we can just sort of tee up a, a half an hour to go over what's in it on a TSC call and, and give it some attention. Yeah, I think that just sounds a like a good tool. So uh, try to get that last chunk of content yeah. in there. And then we've got, uh, we've got all the substance to talk about. And if anybody has some significant uh, information that hadn't been circulated before, then that would be a good time to understand it. Yeah. And I would certainly encourage people to go and and look at the Google Doc and add any and any thoughts. 
Okay. Well, if that's it, then uh, <clears throat> I'll give everybody two minutes back. Thank you. And we'll talk to you all next week. I have one quick thing, if you wouldn't mind, just for yeah. a second. Go ahead. The, the Hyperledger community calendar uh, it seems to be pretty awkward to use, and I wonder if uh, there isn't some effort that could go in them to... So uh, my understanding is that uh, Tracy's been asking uh, for quite some time to get the ability to embed the calendar in the wiki. <laughs> Uh, and apparently that's some change that would potentially be a security problem for the wiki itself. And so the IT won't let her do it. Um, I can speak she's to very course. frustrated is what she told me. And uh, uh, so, yeah, <laughs> I agree. Chris, it's clunky. Uh, Chris, I can speak to that. Oh, uh, go ahead. The, the issue is it's basically you can either have all embedded HTML or none. Um, so that's the, that's the complaint. Uh, and this actually neatly dovetails into something I wanted to bring up, and that is potentially bringing up a second wiki instance to support uh, things that this wiki doesn't support. And we're out of time, so I won't bring it up, but that's under discussion. Bringing okay. up Confluence either instead of or beside the current DocuWiki. There are trade-offs either way. But uh, perhaps on the next call, we could discuss that. Yeah. Thanks, Roy. Yeah. And, and one other quick comment. I, I apologize for not being ready two weeks ago. Um, I didn't get a mail saying that it was due, and I have been negligent and always checking the TSC calendar. Um, but maybe if email could go out to the chairs a week or two before you're expecting updates, that because there's always seems to be a lag and, and some people being able to get it ready. Does that make so, sense? Yeah, I, I've been putting it in the TSC agenda so everyone sees what's upcoming. Um, so that's one place to look, but we can send additional notes if needed as well. Okay. So yeah. like in, in the agenda that went out for this week, it shows what's coming for, for the coming weeks as well for updates. So that's a good place to check, but we can do. But is it, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think actually maybe an email might not be a bad idea going forward, just to, so not everybody's on the TSC, so. Okay. Thanks everybody. And we'll talk to you all next week. Cheers. Ta-ta. Thank you, bye.